I'm Joe Butler of the Butler Law Firm, and today we'll talk about non-emergency medical transportation vans. You can see what on the screen behind me. These are basically a class of vehicles that are designed to transport people with special medical needs, but who are not in an emergency situation. They typically are called, um, often in our business, by an abbreviation NEMT, or non-emergency medical transportation vans. Uh, sometimes you'll see that abbreviated to just net vans for non-emergency transport. But they can look different ways. You've probably seen them on the highway. Some look uh, a little bit bigger like this, almost like a smaller ambulance. There are others um, that look different. Uh, here's another one that does look like a small ambulance with a side loading wheelchair left. Some look just like regular old minivans that someone's put a placard on the side of. And here's another example. This is a large one with a wheelchair ramp in the rear. So we'll address a few aspects of these vans today. The first thing that we should emphasize is that they are medical transportation, like an ambulance, but they're different than ambulances. An ambulance is different in a couple of ways. In an ambulance, you're transporting people who need help right then. I mean, there is an emergency situation. So that means that the people who operate the ambulance are typically in a hurry. They're trying to get someone to a hospital. And the second thing is they have highly specialized equipment inside. You know, they can run oxygen and do all kinds of different things that a normal car cannot. A non-emergency transport van, on the other hand, has less of that. It is designed to carry someone in a wheelchair or a backboard or a stretcher, typically. But they don't have all that uh, specialized equipment inside, and they're not usually in a hurry. Uh, typically, they're picking someone up who has to go to like a scheduled doctor's appointment, maybe from a nursing home to a doctor's appointment, or uh, from a home to some sort of uh, therapy or something like that. So it isn't someone who's in a hurry and they don't need all the specialized medical equipment. The companies who do this um, sort of advertise that way. This is an example I pulled off the internet of an EMT company. And you can see you know, what they claim is that they're taking folks to and from doctor's appointments, hospital discharges, and things like that. They've got a picture of their van here. There are a bunch of these companies uh, here in Georgia. Here's a search that I ran in Atlanta. And you can see I just searched for non-emergency medical transport van. And there's a bunch of results that come up. Um, if we were to go to one of their websites, you know, you would see about what you expect. It's a it's a business operating the, their vans and um, asking you to hire them you know, to do the non-emergency medical transportation drive. We see these cases in a couple contexts. Obviously, our law firm isn't dealing with these cases unless someone has been hurt, and there's a few ways that that can happen. One is the sort of typical way that you might expect a car collision to happen. Sometimes the driver of the NEMT van has just failed to yield, followed too closely, run a stop sign or something like that and cause the collision, the case can come in that way. But they do appear in a couple specialized contexts. The first is which, of which is failing to secure the passenger. So typically the, the person in the van is being, the person that the company is being paid to transport is in a wheelchair, on a backboard, or on a stretcher. And those things have to be tied down or secured in a specialized way. There are, um, regulations in the Federal Code of Regulations that specify how that has to be done. And we can find some pictures that illustrate that. Here, for example, is a wheelchair inside an NEMT van. And you can see it's got these red straps to secure the person. That's really important because the patient being transported can't be strapped into a normal seat belt. So if they're going to be protected in the event of collision, whoever's fault the collision is up being, they have to be tied down and their wheelchair has to be secured in this special way so that they'll be reasonably safe. These typically are vulnerable people. They wouldn't need a van like this in the first place if they were in great health. So there's someone that really needs to be cared for and that's why it's important to strap them down um, correctly. Here's the inside of another NEMT van that has some specialized equipment for strapping down a wheelchair. Um, here's a close-up of somebody strapping down a wheelchair in one of these vans. And here's a shot of a stretcher. You know, obviously someone who's on a stretcher or backboard needs to be secured properly inside the van in order to be transported. Another way that we see cases like this is through driver hiring and training. 
Now, there are good companies out there who hire qualified drivers and do a good job of training them. There are others who unfortunately do not, who hire cut rate drivers who aren't safe to begin with, and then they don't train them correctly in how to tie wheelchairs or stretchers down. Obviously, that can be bad. If someone who's in this vulnerable position is not secured in a collision, then they're flying around inside the van and can be badly hurt. The last point I want to make is that a lot of these NEMT vans are classified as commercial motor vehicles. And if you have the misfortune to need a lawyer in connection with one of these vans, that can at least be a good fact because it typically means that there's more insurance available. Uh, one way that can happen is that sometimes the NEMT van will qualify as a commercial motor vehicle under the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations, which I have pulled up behind me. This is section 390.5, the definition section. And it talks about if a vehicle has a um, gross weight rating of 10,001 pounds or more, and some of them do, then it can qualify as a commercial vehicle. Also, if the vehicle was designed to transport more than eight passengers for compensation, which they are looking for compensation, these are businesses making money, then it can qualify as a commercial motor vehicle for that reason. Even if the van uh, doesn't qualify as a commercial vehicle under those uh, regulatory definitions, there may still be commercial policies available, like a commercial general liability policy. An important thing to think about in these NEMT van cases is that these aren't folks who are in a hurry. You know, an ambulance has to pick someone up in a distress situation and rush them to a hospital. But the driver of an NEMT van is not in a rush. They've got the time to be safe and to strap someone down correctly. If they don't do that, the consequences can be really bad.